Hi, I'm Adam Brindell, and I teach classes with New Circle. I'm here today to talk about context, or the this keyword, in JavaScript. It's a small piece of the JavaScript language, but it's really important. And it hangs people up sometimes because it's a little bit counterintuitive how this works in JavaScript. So let's take a look at where this came from, uh, why we have it, uh, what sort of problems can come up, and how we can fix them. So I'm going to come over here into my text editor. I've got a little uh, HTML page set up. It doesn't really have much in it because there's not a whole lot of UI here. We're just going to be testing out some JavaScript code. So I have a HTML text file in the uh, text editor. And over here in the Firefox browser, I've got the file loaded up. You can see it just says, hello, context world. And it's not really going to have anything else uh, visual to look at. But we'll be able to come down here into the Firebug console and test out our code and see how it's behaving. So where does the whole this keyword come from? Well, in JavaScript, we might have some object we're working with, like let's say a contact. And our contact has a first name. And let's say his first name is Joe. And we add into the contact some sort of function that we want to be able to use that data. So we add in a feature called print name, which is going to be defined as a function. And for now, we'll just console log the output because we're not trying to create fancy UI or logic here. We just want to see how this whole thing's going to work. So inside of the print name function body, uh, we'll say console.log. And OK, here's the first question. What goes inside of console.log? So the first thing we might be tempted to do, especially if we're used to a language like Java or C Sharp, uh, is say first name. And the reason we might think about that is that in those other languages, we think about defining classes. And we think that when we're defining a class, we have implicit access to all of the members of that class. So if I'm defining a class method in Java, I have access to the class properties like first name. But in JavaScript, we have no classes. And we're not defining a class here, uh, just defining an object. And JavaScript objects are closer to hash maps than they are to classes. So just like we wouldn't expect one entry in a hash map to know anything about another entry in a hash map in, say, Java, uh, the print name function here doesn't really know anything about the first name member that we created in the same object. And we can check this by coming over to Firefox, uh, loading up our code, and checking that contact has a first name. But if we, if we try to do contact.printName, it blows up. And we get a reference error because the runtime doesn't know what first name refers to. So there's really no connection between the first name definition up here on line 12 and the reference to a symbol called first name down here on line 15. So we need to do something a little bit different. So the next thing we might try to do is put in contact.firstName. And we know that if the object is contact, we can get at the first name member by saying contact.firstName. So this should work. And we can come over here into Firefox and try again, contact.printName. And it works. Uh, we have Joe being printed out on the con console. So, so far so good. Um, but there's a little problem lurking in here. So supposing that we were to use a different symbol to refer to this contact, say, new contact. And that was referring to contact. And then sometime later in the program, contact ends up referring to something else, maybe a new object or null or something like that. And then we take new contact, and he has a first name. And we take new contact, and we try to print his name. And it blows up. This time we've got a type error. It says contact is null. And contact is null. The problem is that the implementation of print name refers explicitly to this variable name contact. So we've broken encapsulation. We've created a coupling between the implementation here on line 15 and the variable name that we just happened to use out here on line 11. And as soon as we switched and used a different variable name, the whole thing came apart, which actually makes sense. So what we need is a solution now that we understand uh, sort of what's going on uh, in this situation. So let's think about what we'd like to have. Um, when the object is called contact, we'd like to be able to get a hold of contact over here and then go contact.firstName. If the variable were called alternate contact, then we'd like to be able to find alternate contact dot first name. 
And if the variable were, were called something else, say foo, we'd uh, want to say foo.firstName uh, in the same way. So it turns out that that description that we just gave, whatever is before the dot when we're accessing our print name function, is the sort of happy path or mainstream definition uh, for this in JavaScript. So that motivates having a keyword that refers to whatever is before the dot when we invoke the print name function. So if we say contact.printName, this will be contact. If we say new contact.printName, this will be new contact. So we have a this symbol that will serve that role, and we can check that it actually works by coming over here, saying contact.printName. And if we were to do the same trick we did before, where we assign contact to a different variable and set contact to be, say, null, we can check that our alternate variable behaves the exact same way as contact. So we don't have any coupling or dependency between the implementation of print name now and the name of the variable that it's inside of. So that's the purpose of having a symbol called this. Uh, the problem comes from using this, which also exists in a lot of other languages like C++, C Sharp, and Java, uh, in a situation where it doesn't mean quite the same thing. And that causes a certain amount of confusion. This is likely due to uh, the desire at Netscape to use some Java syntax when creating JavaScript back in 1995. But we have this syntax, so we need to learn how to work with, uh, work with the way it is. So now that we understand where this came from and what some of the issues are, uh, in the next section we'll take a look at the details of the problems that can come up. So many developers first come across a problem with this uh, in the context of event handlers and uh, waiting for asynchronous callbacks. But we don't actually need an event handler or any kind of asynchronous callback to see what the issue is. Uh, it really doesn't have anything to do with that. And we can take a look by pretending that we're working with a partner. And so let's suppose that I have someone on my team named Bob. And Bob's going to create some code for me. And I'm going to call Bob's code. So Bob is going to define a function called do calculation. And it's going to do some complicated work and then call me back. So maybe it's going to add two numbers, x and y. And it's going to take a callback as a parameter. And maybe it'll console.log x plus y. And when it's finished with that, it's going to run the callback. So now let's go over into Firefox and see what happens when I try to use Bob's code and tell it to call my contact.print name as a callback. So we come in here and we say do calculation. And we'll give it, say, 3 and 4. And then we're going to give it contact.printName. And what happened? Well, it printed out 7. So it did the addition right. But when it went to do the callback, instead of getting Joe's name, we got undefined. So what's going on here? We said contact.printName. And we said that this would be the thing before the dot. So shouldn't this be contact? And shouldn't print name work? Well, not exactly. Because we didn't call the function contact.printName. And this, in JavaScript, gets a particular value when a function's invoked or called. In this case, we're just passing a reference to the print name function or a pointer. And we're losing the context information. We're losing the fact that it's called contact.printName. If we come over here to the source code, we can see that the function call happens down here at line 25. When we call the function, we just say callback. And then we have this call operator with the parentheses. We don't have a dot at all. And if we don't have a dot, we're not going to get anything before the dot getting bound to this. So something's falling apart here. In the next section, we'll take a look at how the JavaScript interpreter decides what this should be based on how the function's being called.